If you're watching this on YouTube and you have a question, comment, suggestion, or maybe you just want to find out more information about the product, you can find the link below. Hello again, I'm Rodney Reynolds with 3GameMan.com and welcome to another video review. Today I'm looking at the Genius DVR FHD 6 50 vehicle recorder. It comes in this lively informative box that has pictures as well as features and specifications about the product on it. Now let me open it up and let's see what's inside. At the top you'll find their one year warranty card and you can register the product if you want. I would recommend doing that. The vehicle recorder itself is in this styrofoam bag. They have a piece of protective plastic here which you can just take right off. At the bottom is a window mount. This just gets suctioned to the window and the other part gets attached to the vehicle recorder. In this bubble wrap bag, they have a cigarette power adapter. It goes into the cigarette lighter and a USB cable. And at the bottom, a pretty substantial user's manual. Now I'll first go through the specifications, then I'll have a closer look at it, and finally I'll do a road test both in the day and at night. It comes with a 2 megapixel CMOS sensor and the viewing angle on this is quite substantial at 127 degrees and you really want it to be for a vehicle recorder so it will capture almost everything that is in front of it. Also it comes with a 2.4 inch TFT panel. This is very convenient both for viewing the videos and and also just looking through it and scrolling through the different menus and whatnot. As well, the resolution here is anywhere from 1080p down to 720p. If you're at 1080p, and by the way, this is full 1080p, 1920 by 1080, it is 30 frames per second. And at full 720p, that is 1280 by 720, it is 60 frames per second. So you have to make a choice here what you want to go with. If, for example, you want to pick out license plates, I would definitely recommend going 1080p. If you're going for basically frames per second, you want speed, go for the 720p setting. And the file format is AVI. Now, it comes with a pretty impressive lens. It has an f-stop of two and six layers of glass. And what that should mean is fantastic night recordings. And to top it off, it has SHDR, or Super High Dynamic Range, which will give you crisp crisp, clean, sharp video under high contrast and reflective light. Now it has a real time counter, so if you were to get involved in something, you know the exact date and time. Plus, it has a three axis G4 sensor. And what that means is, if you get involved in an accident pretty much from any direction, this will start recording automatically. It supports micro SD HD cards up to 32 gigabytes in size, and they recommend class six or above. The TV output on this is HDMI or AV. As well, they include a 500 milliamp hour lithium polymer rechargeable battery. Now, in order to power this, use the cigarette power adapter that they include, and that is five volts. And by the way, the operating temperature of this is between a minus 10 degrees Celsius up to plus 65 degrees Celsius, but storage temperature is between a minus 20 degrees Celsius and a plus 70 degrees Celsius. Now let's have a closer look at it. You can see it is all black. The overall styling and build quality on this is quite good. At the front is their logo. You can see it is full HD 1080p and the model number. Here we have a speaker, the lens, and a tiny microphone. On the left side is the HDMI out. Here's where the micro SD card would get inserted and the on off switch. On the right side is the reset button and the AV out. At the top is a mini USB connector and this is the T buckle for attaching the bracket that they include. And it just slides in like so. At the back there is the 2.4 TFT panel and at the bottom a number of different buttons. At the very left is a menu mode button. Next to that is a playback return button. In the middle is a lock file OK button and the two to the right, the one here, is up and the one to the very right is down or LCD off. Now when you connect it in first, this is what comes up. And if you do not have it turned on, it will remind you to turn it on. 
Now actually the first thing that you'll need to do is set up the date and time and that's what you'll see first when you turn on initially. But when you have that set up, you'll see the splash screen that I showed you. Within the settings, you can change the cycle time. You can either have it set at three minutes or five minutes. You've got three different video resolutions. You can either have it at 1080p 30 frames per second, which I would recommend for most people because you can pick out license plates at 1080p if need be. You can also have it at 720p 60 frames per second if you know you may be looking at capturing faster video. And you've also got a 720p 30 frames per second option. Voice recording, you can have it on or or off. Now this is bump auto lock, which you can set to off and you've got three different sensitivities here. You can have the LCD on or you can basically turn it off in one minute or five minutes. Let me set it to actually five minutes. Now this is adjusting the brightness and you can, you know, reduce it or you can increase it. You can have the beep on or off. Let me turn that off. The volume, speaker volume, you can, you know, have it off or you can increase it or decrease it. You've got the date stamp, which you can have on or off and I would recommend having it on. Clock, this is where you would set a date and the time. Choose your language. You've got the TV system. You can either have it at NTSC or PAL, NTSC for me. And the flicker, well, you can either have it at 50 hertz or 60 hertz. You can format the card and you can set everything to default. Now within the playback menu, you've got a slideshow option here. You can have it on or off as well. You've got the file attribute, which you can have normal file or you can lock the file if you want to. As well, you can delete one. I'll say yes. Go ahead and delete or let me go back. You can alternatively delete all. Now have a look at it installed. The bracket that they give you is quite good and the suction cup on the end really adheres to the glass. It's the kind where you press against the glass then you flip that lever to create more suction and it really does stay in place. As well you can position it and lock the vehicle recorder really where you want. Okay let's get on to the results. I'll do two tests. One is in daylight and the other at nighttime. Both of these are at 1080p at 30 frames per second. I knew it yesterday because yesterday um, we looked at his glasses. Okay, so this is a test at night. It is completely dark outside. Again, I have it set at 1080p at 30 frames per second. And it looks as if it is performing quite well. I can see it by looking at the screen on the back. Very impressive for a camera that is fairly inexpensive. And also pay attention to the quality of the microphone. While it's not perfect, it's not bad either. And you know what? This wouldn't be a bad camera if you were actually into video blogging. You could just talk away while everyone watched and listened. Now I work from home, so really that wouldn't be something that I would be interested in, but a lot of people commute back and forth to work. This is a fantastic vehicle recorder, and the only thing it really doesn't have is built-in GPS, as well as a touchscreen on the back. But other than that, it is outstanding. So if you spend a lot of your time on the road, it would be 
perfect because if you do get involved in something, whether it's an accident or not, you got it on camera. Overall, this is a kick-ass product. Until next time, take care. How do you think this product stacks up? To vote, head on over to 3dgameman.com. And while you're there, check out the pricing.